on the note of the review bombing and all that kind of business loft you, you had said you wanted to say something so yeah that's the best review aggregate site in my opinion is letterboxd because it most normies and people who just like um like culture war people don't even know about it so it, what you get is a lot of much more accurate like consensus of what people are thinking about the show uh, in terms of like quality, because what I'm seeing from from Metacritic, right? This is on Metacritic as a 1.9 audience score out of a thousand reviews. There are there's yep. an overwhelmingly amount, uh, overwhelming amount of zero out of tens. And maybe I mean, if you guys have a different opinion, what do you say? Overwhelming amount. What's your base? Oh, well, just just, just go to the user score and scroll down. So I, hear, I hear you say overwhelming, but I've seen no evidence of it. Well, yeah. no, no, no. Just go to Metacritic and scroll down. It's all zeros and ones. So yeah, they do break it out opinion, on that website. Yeah. Yeah. So when I see a zero, I kind of just disregard it because <laughs> if you can you? hate the show and still give it like a three, you know what I mean? I what think if... zeros are a much more are, are a culture war po political statement rather than an actual. And I and I can see the same thing being said about ten out of tens too. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Abs if you go on IMDb, there's way more tens than there are. Well. There's tens and ones, and then there's like nothing else. So, I I what I do is I just disregard the tens, I disregard the ones and zeros, and then you kind of like get an idea of what people are thinking about the show. That's that's kind of my my perspective on the whole review bombing because I think review bombing is real. I think I don't think this show is a zero. I'm sorry. It's just I think people when they rate it a zero, it's a political statement. Yeah. I just I will say though that if you have a <laughs> lot of tens and a lot of ones. And not so much in between. You know what that tells me? It's an extremely divisive show it's, yep. with very little going forward. Because if it had anything going for it, with this many alleged views, it clearly, even if it's not 25 millions, millions upon millions did see it. And yes. if there's yeah. so few views in between, that tells me that it's universal well, agreement that this must be pretty crap because if it wasn't there would have been something in between that see, i don't i don't know about that because i don't know how many i i would just be willing to bet that the vast majority of people don't go and review things on the internet i've i've almost never done it i do it on letterbox i would agree but i don't yeah, i don't but, go on but the or vast right. majority don't have to because you have a yeah. certain subset of people that go and right. review everything and there's many of them and they will always even out the score. And those people are not yeah, giving but, this the average views that they would for other things. But, Meta, but for example, Metacritic has a 1.9 user score and IMDB has like a 6.5, right? So what's happening with Metacritic? Well, I think I think I think it's just getting just review bombed. Like that's I, I think it's obvious, right? Um, well, the, the people it that could be. love the show are just not reviewing it on, on Metacritic. Like well, I don't real, real, real quick, I mean. real quick. Is Metacritic where you review meat? Because I always thought it was Metacritic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Metacritic, yeah. I will... Yeah. Sorry. Well, here's the I thing. I mean, meat, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of them out there. I mean, IMDb is, of course, owned by Amazon. So yes. bear that in mind. Uh, also, I just checked. I went into the Lord of the Rings page on uh, uh, Amazon Prime. I can leave a review right now. Now, there are no reviews yeah. visible yet. Uh, and, and, but they, they will accept my review. How did you I have figure not... out how to get it? Cause I couldn't get to it. I just simply went to the, to the rings of power landing page. It's right at the top of Amazon. When you go to amazon.com, I clicked into it and then it says write a review. Um, and you can do it. I can leave a one star or five star or three star right now, write a review. Now it's not going to show up. It's going to be cached for till it, till whenever Amazon lets them out. Uh, okay. I found um, it here. That's why. All right. Yeah. Cause they don't yeah. have the reviews up. That's why I was thrown off. Usually you can click on right. the stars. That's why. So, but, but, but Lockie's right. I mean, Metacritic is, is yeah. pretty, uh, skewed right now. It stands at, and this may be a little bit more updated than when you saw it lofty. I've got 1,465 negative reviews, 365 okay. positive, 79 mixed, with a 2.5 user score as of right now uh, oh, on wow. Metacritic. So it's it's come up a little. But you're right. Look, you can't always trust these things, and I think you're right. Most people don't go online, uh, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and all this. But again, as we've talked about before, review bombing can go both ways. It, review yes. bombing well, not can only be that, ones, like, you know, you know, it can be tens. You, you like know, I said before, I don't see either side, and I mean either side, really having the time to to create the amount of accounts it yeah. would take to actually make that big of a difference and i remember 
going through this shit clear back with the last Jedi for fuck's sake. I mean, that was the whole thing is, Oh, it's being review bombed. It's being review bombed. It's like, I see equally amount of, you know, 10 out of tens as I do with one out of ones or zero out of zeros, depending on how low right. the, the, the score went. So to me, those are just kind of washing each other out in the end of the day. It was like, I don't understand what the problem is here. Um, I think it can go both ways. You're right. Uh, an, an example of a positive review bomb that I've noticed, and I did a big deep dive on this years ago, um, and, and then I got banned and my whole thread was deleted. But uh, Battle Angel Alita was, was, in my opinion, I think positively review bombed uh, to it to an extreme level of... It was a cult. It was another culture war battle between. Honestly, battle I would Angelita say the one that was Captain worse Marvel. was Zack Snyder's Justice League was probably even more so. Yeah, on the well, that's another side. But 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 Captain Marvel came out the same exact week true, as Battle Angel Alita, so we had two films competing, and it was just a culture war review bombing like competition because you had the left, you know, pumping Captain Marvel up with tens, and then you had people, you know, the other side pumping Battle Angel Alita, which is. Not a very good adaptation, by the way. The manga is a much more violent, gritty, um, aesthetically, you know, interesting than I don't know. I just I hate Robert Rodriguez, so I might be biased, but uh, <laughs> I just think the in, there were so many tens. Like I'm just like this. This is not a ten out of ten, guys. <laughs> it's a Disney Channel romance, like. But yeah, but Captain Marvel was the same thing, right? So you saw a lot of tens there. Um, I just think a lot of people. I wish like we would kind of encourage people to be more honest about their just reviewing stuff like as as well, a community or you know what i mean honestly i'm not somebody who even really i don't tell anybody how to like review anything period like no. i don't know anybody who does that's like one thing that we're not about in the first place but if people feel like they want to go out and give something a rating or review it that's their decision i'm yeah. somebody who's not a big fan of like numbered reviews anyway because my my taste will change over time sometimes i may yeah. like something earlier on and then i'll go back to when i didn't like it as much and vice versa well, i yeah. think that's just an, an average with most people and that's where to me i won't trust any imdb number or any of that and, until it's a movie that's been out for at least four or five years and a good number yeah. of people have been able to see it to where i know that that number's probably more accurate because even rotten tomatoes which is oh. an aggregate and sucks in its case like unless a movie is a little older i really don't trust their numbers that often yeah i, I don't trust rotten tomatoes ever you know why <laughs> they gave audience rating for morbius is a 71 it is 71, a 71. it should be an 81 five thousand plus verified re reviews right how are you, are you gonna tell me that is not a meme score people just went and quote gave unquote verified because the, because yeah. if anything meme, it should like, be 91 yeah oh come on you know that that's just the, that that entire. You're talking to one meme, of the few right? people who will actually defend Morbius as a good. Movie, well, that's okay. No, no, like I'm that. not saying it. Is, ironically, there, though, but still. You no, know, there's definitely people who think Rings of Power is legitimately a zero and and a legitimately a ten, and same thing with I guess Morbius, but I, very few people I'm sure think this is like a perfect. The movie, difference but, is, is I'm actually yeah. cognitive of the fact that it is <laughs> not an objectively good film, right? Like okay. that's the difference. I enjoy Morbius for its like yeah. the bugs to me are the features in that respect i mean jurassic world dominion is another example i thought that was a terrible movie and it has a 77 on on you know rotten tomatoes it's like i guess that's not a, it it's not necessarily review positive review bombing but i i just don't trust rotten tomatoes really to give mm. to give um an accurate maybe in like the most vague way like like it, to me it should be thumbs up and thumbs down <laughs> maybe i don't know these percentages to me are just completely inaccurate. And thumbs as up far and thumbs like, down is lame. It's, it's it's it is lame. It's there's but, no nuance to it. And but I agree with you, Lofty. Yeah, when yeah. you see like everyone giving ones, everyone giving tens, those yeah. are like the people who hate it, the people who want to review bomb and love it. I think what you yeah. do is you delete those numbers and then do an average of everything in between, which is probably yeah. more accurate. So that they that could get see, that. and that's the thing is they could give you that option on a lot of these websites, and I think some of them they do, where you can filter out certain ones, and and some people are smart enough to do that. Most people just don't give well, a shit. Otherwise. You know what's cool about Letterboxd is it's you can actually you can curate your own, you can follow. It's a social media site, so you can you know, um, let's see here, what's this note for example, right? It has an average of like a three and a half out of five stars, like hundred and thirty six thousand three and a half ratings. 
but you can follow people, right? You can like Twitter, you can have your own followers and you can curate who you think you trust. And basically you can um, aggregate those people's scores. And like, I just think it's a much better, I think everyone should have a letterboxed account because um, yeah, I, th I just think you can, you can see what, yeah, I just think it's a better site. Well, what yeah. you're describing was what Rotten Tomatoes was 20 years ago. Yep. Right. Yeah. You had reviewers you could trust. You could follow those reviewers. You had a lot of public interaction uh, to the movies and whatnot. Uh, it was a pretty good and reliable site, and that all changed when it was purchased. Mm -hmm. But um, but the, yeah, the, the the I don't think Amazon. I don't think they should be taken. Sunlight is the best disinfectant, I think, in most cases with everything. So I don't think that anybody should be well, censoring reviews. And I think what Chris, is, or I think what script is kind of getting more towards lofty. And I, and I got to say, this is the bottom line is the reason that the, that if, if review, but let, let's just say for sake of argument, just to get past the argument of all of any of it, the review yeah. bombing is an actual thing. Okay. To me, it is a result of what script is saying. You cannot trust critics anymore. So that is basically a fan movement of people getting out there to try and basically yeah. make a balance. Uh, yeah. And I think that's the kind of thing. And I think we see it more so in those discrepancies, whether we trust the Rotten Tomato scores or not, that we still can't deny there's a huge discrepancy within a certain amount of uh, films, whether you like them or not, or certain other people may yeah. like them or not. And it's it just, to me, it, it looks like it's a fan, a fan movement more than anything to say, look, we're, we're not going to be silenced or called this or that or the other. But Yeah. I don't even know what the point of critics are anymore because I used to follow like various critics and like, oh, I love this guy's back. Actually, Attack of the Show with like with <laughs> Chris Gore was like my guy. I was like, yo, I'll watch anything he likes. And then, uh, you know, back when G4 was a thing, I was like, I'll, I'll follow these guys. Like, um, they, they were my critics, I would say, for like video game stuff. And but nowadays, it's like I'm basically just watching YouTubers that I agree with. You know, not for because like. For example, I think Jeremy Johns, I trust him to give a more accurate, into, as far as from what, uh, like, I, I connect with him, what I'm trying to say, more than I do, like, a, an, a generic, like, EW critic or something. Like, I don't know what so, the point of critics so, are anymore. No, you, we, we just, you, you just yeah, said sorry. you aligned yourself with a personality. No, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. I mean, it's just like, uh, I mean, you're pointing out what the strength of YouTube is, which YouTube yeah is um authenticity that and that's what people want that's what people want in their news right so you're, it's not this yeah. doesn't just apply to this doesn't just apply to reviewing and critiquing media television film uh comic books whatever it also applies to the news people want more than anything authenticity and as everything right. has become more corporatized whether it's the the evening news whether it's news by outlets like the washington post or, or newsweek i yeah, used to i corporate. have a subscription yeah it's just corporate it's the corporatization of everything has sanitized everything there's literally no alternative culture anymore it doesn't exist so what youtube has become is a place where authenticity thrives i think that's what you're responding to that's why like jeremy johns i like him as well like like i don't yeah. and there's a, I follow a bunch of people to get a read or some people is another who, other one yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's like, I mean, I consider like Stuckman or Campia or Jeremy Johns like a, yeah. they're like a sort of more, more like your typical critic, right? And then there's people right. that like also like really know something about a particular type of film and or yeah. they know the source material like comic books and or Lord of the Rings and whatnot. And so I weight those having more credibility depending on what they're reviewing. But I think it's just right. a matter of like, and I also like to listen to people I don't agree with just because oh well what's the what what's i want to get a different take you know so yes. yeah i think you're responding to that and me by the way when i was on tech mm. i never had like any tv training all i did was start a punk rock fanzine out of high school called film threat and then <laughs> just did that as a yeah. magazine and then someone said well what you say in the magazine is funny can do you think you could do this on television so that kind of kicked off like one tv job whatever but uh, youtube i just YouTube is where it's at, in my opinion, because you get people, you know, who know, like you've read all the Lord of the Rings books. I have not. Gary Beekler's read them and the Cimmerillion. I think yep. he was as well. So I, I kind of wait like people yep. who have more 
knowledge a little better. Someone who's like, I read every Captain America comic or whatever it is. Like, yeah. you know, like, okay, well, I want to see what that insight and, you know, understanding that adaptations, you have to translate it to real world. It, a movie's not a book. So it's, it's a different experience. So you're going to lose something, right? Um, you know, just having, you know, being a big fan of, fan of Dune, I love what yep. Denis Villeneuve did. I think he captured the essence of well, the book. I mean, I yep. still think it should be a, like, I still think it should be a series, like 12 hours. I agree. I agree. But whatever. Well, we do have to get some super chats here, but I, I, I do think you brought up a, a good point, Chris. And, and, and if I allow me to stroke your ego, if I may, for just a few moments, you are a part of what I would consider the last generation of the, the true last critics the last ones who we actually could trust you are the last bastion of those guys that of the of the Roger Eberts the Gene Siskels the the Rex Reeds the those guys who we could actually trust because you were one of those first people the, the last of that generation to be on television before the internet became what it is now right and and, and you're right because now those who the, I agree with you like Stuckman and uh, um, a lot of those guys, I, I see them more as mainstream critics than I do like us. Like when when I look at us now, like us, I see as the the alternative media, and, and that's where yeah. a lot of these folks are th that are in the chat right now are are here for because they want to hear alternative, you know, views on these things. You know, Richard Roper is only one of the only other few last ones I can think of that I trust besides you and a yeah. few others that that even if I may not agree with everything you guys review, I know that I'm getting your actual yeah. thoughts on but, it. But also like, you know, look, movie critic, it's not even a job anymore. I mean, definitely on YouTube, it can be, but in, in mainstream like newspapers and news outlets, it's just, you know, uh, it, that, that, that job is going away very, yeah. very fast. <laughs> it's like freelance <laughs> now. Yeah. It's all freelance. Basically. It's all freelance, but it used to be like those days are kind of over and I appreciate it. I kind of just have, lasted through eras and different mediums yeah but i started in you know doing print and doing a magazine right so so i, I just had no aspirations to do tv because i thought people on tv yeah. was, were stupid because they're mostly overproduced and then come to find out that's real and then finally when i was on g4 it's like oh now i can actually kind of be myself on camera but that's what youtube is youtube right. is you're yourself on camera like you're the the to me the youtubers that succeed are the ones that are their authentic selves in terms of their opinions. Now, you may not always agree with my opinion and that's fair, but I think too often, and this is why I think shows like yours, you know, Midnight's Edge in the Morning and the FNT crew and so many others, Yellow Flash are popular is because of getting that authentic take because there's an audience that's been, wait a sec, you told me this movie was good and I went to see it and, and I there's something about it I didn't like. And is there something wrong with me but other people were, were pointing that out and i think too often people have been burned by critics saying it's the best since the last one you were talking about that earlier time yeah. you know, the best marvel movie since the last one it's like and then finally at the end of phase four cri critics are finally admitting yeah phase four was not very good like yeah <laughs> they maybe should have yeah. stopped it or they should have had a plan or they should have actually taken a couple years off to make us make us miss it because what they yeah. produced is just really, really a mixed bag to, you know, bad to just mixed. Right. Uh, the, the, I think what I was trying to say about the definition of like, what, what is a critic? I, I just think being more authentic is like the, the, the peak of what, what people um, want in a critic. I think uh, I, I double majored in film studies and journalism in, in the college. And I, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a movie critic. And then at the like my senior year, I was like, this is such like a um, it's like a contrived like job. Like you go work for, a, a you know, Entertainment Weekly and then just do exactly what you would do on like your own YouTube channel. But you get paid to do it for a corporation like it's so inauthentic. And I just kind of like, I don't know, I just wasted four years of college, basically. Mm -hmm. But um. Everybody and also, to... you know, you can learn how to be a critic. Just watch film out, you know, on your own. Do, you know, watch classic films, you know, research various movements. Um, you know, I think part of being a critic is also knowing the film industry and like how, how cinema like kind of works as an art form. 
which Chris does very well, which is why he's super successful at it. But yeah, I don't think you don't need to go to school for that kind of shit. No, I, dude, dude, I'm a college dropout and I, I wrote yeah. a book. I wrote a book that's required reading in college. So there you go. The irony. Yeah. So, and I've, I've given speeches at like USC at yeah. um, American Film Institute. Like, so I always like to point that out. Like you're paying for this education. You got to read my book. And so whatever, but it just, it just goes to show. And this is why I like YouTube. It's very entrepreneurial and it's very, yeah. you, you, it's, you have to be self-motivated. And it's tough. You have to be consistent and you have to be authentic and you can't teach, you know, authenticity. You can't teach it. It's just no. something you are. So like that's, and I, and I will say in order to be a critic, there's just three things you need. And that is, you know, one, you have to have passion. There's no shortage of that. Right. Then the second thing you need to have some sort of skill, whether it's speaking and or writing skills. So yeah. good grammar. And the third thing is, and this is the thing that most people lack. And that's the knowledge of film history, right? You ha have to have film history. You have to know the background. You have to know movies more than five years old. You have to know movies, you know, <laughs> past when Marvel movies started being made, right? Because all also you have to know movies. In my opinion, you should probably know movies outside of the Hollywood system if you want to be like Correct. a genuine person. Foreign yeah. films, independent <laughs> yeah. films, and movies like like this is why we have this whole generation of people that think that like, oh my God, it's the first black what? Like, dude, I've been watching. <laughs> You know, movie. I mean, I grew up in the seventies. Didn't see, and and like none of this is new. You are just no. pointing it out to virtue signal, which is bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's total bullshit. It was it's, what what Shang what Shang Chi what Simu Liu said about his character in Shang Chi was absolutely mind blowing to me because not only was he shitting on people like Jackie Chan who was doing Hollywood films by the way in like the early yeah. early two thousands and was like the biggest star on the planet, right? Saying he's the yeah. first. Oh, he's breaking glass ceilings, but not only that, like. These people will flock to the theaters to watch Shang-Chi six times, but they won't watch like a Hong Kong film from the 90s. They won't watch, they, they won't go out exactly. of their way to watch anything that's subtitled. It's like, they won't watch oh my anything God, with the rest of the cast in Shang-Chi. Well, that's the want... thing, like he shits on the yeah. rest of the cast in Shang-Chi. Yeah. He basically broke all the ceilings to allow him to do what he's yeah. doing. He tries to like split hairs by saying Asian superhero, but he doesn't. <laughs> he just says Asian star. And I'm like, no, dude, you are... Your, your family was very wealthy. They, they yeah. left yeah. China when he was five years old and came to Ontario. He went to become an accountant. And after he graduated and got hired as an accountant for like one week, he started acting. And th that's just it. He's barely actually used any of his actual education. Yep. I can't believe you Bruce Lee didn't come back to life to kick his ass for that. <laughs> yeah. one, but anyway. uh, he's and in a movie problem. with Tony Lung and Michelle Yao, and he says that stuff. Yeah, it's like Tony that, that, yeah, like, it took everything everywhere shit. all at once to remind people that Michelle Yao used to be a hell of a fucking action star, right? Like, oh!